Hey kiddos, and welcome back. By now you should be back at school for a couple of days and wishing that Christmas break was a whole month long, just like all your teachers. All right, I'm actually glad to see you back. What we're gonna work on now, we're gonna continue equilibrium, and we're going to look at another type of K. Again, it's another type, but we're going to solve it the same way. Remember, if you can get that identify step under your belt, then all you have to remember is that Dina saves everyone. Check for dilution, check for stoichiometry, and we are going to see some this time, and then do your equilibrium. Now, the SP stands for solubility product, and what we'll be talking about are those salts that we memorized were insoluble. And I know, I know, that sounds like we're kind of lying to you a little bit, but it's not. We're, they are very, very, very slightly soluble. In fact, one of the ways I test my deionized water and whether it's time to change my filter is I add a little bit of silver nitrate. And if I see that white, cloudy silver chloride forming, I know that it's not so deionized as I thought it was. So let's jump right in. What we find is that insoluble salts are actually slightly soluble. And what we'll see is an equilibrium will be set out up, and we're going to have the insoluble salt. The insoluble salt will always be our reactant of our equilibrium. And we're going to set that up as our aqueous ions. We're going to dissolve it. And we'll set up a few of these before we actually start calculating the equilibrium constant. Let me just uh, look at that one that was an example. In the notes, we had lead chloride. Your rules tell you that all chlorides are insoluble except for silver lead 2 and mercury 1. And so if we put that into water, it's not going to go 100%. Soluble salts go 100%. But we will see a little bit of lead ion form. And we will see our chloride ion form. So we will go from the solid to the aqueous. Now, what's not shown in here is that really there's an intermediate step that we could put. The solubility of lead chloride is going to be the amount of lead chloride that becomes aqueous. That's going to be our definition of solubility, S, in terms of molarity at least. Now, that is always represented, an aqueous salt is always represented as its free ions. So that's kind of the gap in between there that the equilibrium expression don't show. So let's take a look at this. If Q is le greater than K, remember if Q is greater than K, that means that our products, sorry, not the greatest color, here we go, much better. Our products are greater than our reactants, and if we have too much product, we're going to shift to the reactant side, and the reactant side is where we see our solid forming. That's our precipitate, so the answer will be yes. Now, if, on the other hand, Q is less than K, that means our product is less than our reactant, and that means that the uh, equilibrium is going to shift towards our product side to get to equilibrium. Since there are free ions on the product side, we would not see an equilibrium form. In other words, if our Q, which we're going to set up as our initial, is less than our KSP, it means that the amount of ion we have present is less than what is soluble. So means our ion concentrations were less than the solubility at and that's always going to be an underlying assumption at that given temperature. 
So let's go on and see a few more. So we call solubility S. It's the amount of salt that will dissolve to form aqueous ions So and, uh, at a given temperature. It's good enough. Now watch your units. Every once in a while you will be asked for grams per liter. Uh, we're going to be dealing primarily with our problems with molarity. Uh, you know how to get moles to mass using molar mass, so I'm not going to demonstrate that. Here's the key is, you have to have the presence of some solid as evidence that the solution is saturated if we're going to be doing those. Now, how much is irrelevant? We don't care how much. Solids don't show up in the KSP. But you have to have some there uh, to prove that the solution is a saturated solution. That's how you know a solution saturated. Is there some solid present? If it were super saturated, if you add a crystal, you'd see a whole bunch of precipitate. And if it's unsaturated, you could add solid and more would dissolve. If it's saturated, they're solid on the bottom, showing that all has gone into solution that is capable of going into solution. Now, again, we're going to see, uh, hopefully it's not surprising at this point, we are going to see that lovely magic mole ratio show up because we're dealing with rice. And it's at the C of rice that we will see that, but we're also going to see stoichiometries here, and we see that magic mole ratio for stoichiometry. Now, um, if our solubility is equal to the aqueous amount, so our aqueous amount of Cl2 is equal to our solubility, well, that goes 100% if it's aqueous, that by definition, aqueous ions, would go 100% to the free ions. So if this represents the solubility, then if I multiply by the mole ratio one to one, that means my lead ion is also the solubility. Now for chloride, I would have to multiply by a mole ratio of two to one. Okay, so that is 2s. Okay, so that means my chloride ion concentration is equal to two times what we're calling the solubility. I'm going to use S instead of X because once you solve for S, you link it to what the question is often asking. And the question is very often asking, what is the solubility of this salt? So let's move forward and see some examples of that. I want you to understand it conceptually before we worry about the mathematics. If you're hung up on the concepts, you need to get some consultation as soon as you get into class. So let's look at the first example. We've got calcium fluoride. Now, if we took some solid calcium fluoride and put it into solution, we would get one calcium ion and we would get two fluoride ions. And those are both aqueous. I'm not going to be writing that a lot. I'm going to assume from now on that if I write ions, you know that they're aqueous ions. Now, in terms of the solubility, since there's a one-to-one -one mole ratio with the calcium, that means that my calcium ion is directly equal to the solubility. It's a direct measurement of the solubility. And it means my fluoride ion, whatever molarity I would calculate that, is double what is referenced as the solubility for that salt. Now, to write the KSP, KSP expressions are always given in terms of the uh, molarities, partial pressures, but this isn't a gas. Now, remember, this is a solid. We don't put solids in our K values, so that would be our KSP. There would be nothing in the denominator because solids don't show up in the KSP. Now, if I wanted to show that in terms of S, this is the expression. If you're asked for the expression, that's what you have to give. But KSP in terms of S is S for the calcium, now the fluoride is 2S, and then I square it. Be very, very careful. Common mistake is people forget to square the 2. 
So Ksp would be 4 times the solubility squared, or cubed, excuse me. That's a cube right there if you can't see it. All right, let's try the Ag2SO4. So that's my solid. If I put that into water, whatever is going to be soluble will be soluble as free ions. So I get two silvers plus a sulfate. And my Ksp would be the molarity of silver ion. Hopefully at that point you're not seeing anything new that you'll see that this is multiplied just like we did in our other videos, 2 minus. Now find the salt, find the ion that is, excuse me, a 1 to 1 mole ratio with the salt, if possible. That's the one that's the same as S. So what we would find is the silver ion is equal to 2 times my solubility, and my sulfate ion happens to be equal to my solubility. So Ksp, in terms of S, don't write that as an expression, that's not what's being looked for, but it's 2S squared times S, and that is also 4S cubed. Okay, let's look at this last one. If we took calcium, now this is slightly tougher because in this case we don't have an ion that is a one-to-one -one ratio. And I don't call either of these S. I keep my solubility to mean, S means in this case this molarity of the calcium phosphate that went in to solution. So since neither of these is a one-to-one -one mole ratio, neither of these concentrations represent the S. So here would be my, my equation, my expression, a rather complicated one. I actually went online today and found a quadratic equation solver so that I didn't have to worry about the quadratic equation. On an AP test, you will not be asked to solve the quadratic equation. Much more concerned about the concepts, the underlying concepts and the setup and the problem solving and the critical thinking than we are, can you plug into your calculator and let it use its own quadratic equation problem solver? That's not what's important here. So you won't see quadratic equations or, or worse on the AP test. Now in this case, my calcium ion is actually equal to three times the solubility, and my phosphate, got to change colors here because that's not going to work, is actually equal to 2 times my solubility. So Ksp in terms of that would be, getting really complicated, 3s cubed times 2s squared. So hopefully that gives you an indication of what we mean by the word solubility. It's the maximum amount, so S is going to be the maximum amount that can dissolve per specified amount of solvent. So in our case, molarity means per one liter. And we have to note that it's also at a given temperature. All right, with that background, you should be ready to solve these. So next video, we'll be plugging and chugging some numbers and thinking about those Rice Krispie bars again. Until then, this is signing off.